All right, so we are in AP Calculus. Today's date is Thursday, January 9th, 2020. All right, so lesson today is position 7-4. Our objective today is to do what? Use integration to find n position and determine maximums and minimums. There it is. So there's this kind of interesting relationship between um, f prime max, f prime min. Um, let's see how Arrow's doing. Um, she is feeling better, TLDR. All right, so, yeah, let's do this. Position and position change. Let's talk about Mr. Frog. So he's hopping down a road, um, and for between zero and five seconds, it doesn't say, for the time between zero and five, we have an equation that models his position. So we need to find his position at x is equal to eight and time is equal to zero. And this is like a very heavy calculator lesson. So make sure that we have those at the ready. I might as well open up my, and I haven't had a chance to go fix my other one yet. So I'm gonna keep using this one. Your, yours will look nicer than mine. Lucky you guys. All right, so um, we need to come down here and punch this into our calculator. So y is equal to natural log of, it's going to be x in this case, x squared minus 3x plus 3. I'm going to end my parentheses, but you don't necessarily need to. Our window is going to be between 0, enter, and 5, enter. And you can zoom 0 it right now while we're waiting, just to see if we got the right equation. Um, Zoom zero once you have the correct window. So your window should be between zero and five for your x, and then you hit zoom zero to fit to size. So there should be the function that you guys have, and a hey, that's what it mine looks like down here. So we're doing a good job so far. So what is his position at x is equal to eight? Or his position is x equals eight at time equals zero. So we have a starting value. Let's all label that in the notes. This is the start. We don't start at zero. And very, very frequently, you are not going to start at zero because they like to trick you to see if you're paying attention. So always look for the start value. We should always be labeling that. So here we go. We start here at eight. There's Mr. Frog. Um, and when he's farthest to the left, when is he farthest to the left? When is he farthest to the right? So we're kind of looking like, this is kind of a, like a minimum question. Where's the minimum value? And where's the maximum value? And the trouble is, we don't have a position equation. We have a velocity equation. So we're going to have to do some trick. So minimum and maximum. Can someone help me with the definition? What is F minimum? All the way back in what unit was it? I don't even remember what unit it was, but it was in the past. What is the definition of F minimum? F minimum. It's either F prime or F double prime. F prime goes from a negative to a positive or a positive to a negative? Negative to a positive. And an F max, therefore, geo is a F prime goes from exactly positive to a negative. So it's kind of doing that review question. So when I'm doing farthest to the left, I'm really looking for what is the minimum value. So where does it go from a negative to a positive? If we look at our graph, oh, there it is. It might be there but it could be somewhere else too. And we have to be really careful about this. So we, we don't know. So let's come down here. Let's kind of skip ahead. We're gonna come back and answer A and B. This whole lesson is revolving around how do we answer A and B and I'm gonna give you your instructions. So once we have the equation entered, we're gonna automatically assume that. We're going to have to calculate some things. So um, we do second trace in order to calculate. Oh look, there's a minimum and maximum option. So our instructions, we do hit the second button and then we hit the trace button because that means we're gonna calculate. And in this case, we are going to calculate the uh, minimum. Um, but the minimum would only work if it was a graph of position. So minimum isn't gonna really help us because the minimum is gonna be down here. That is meaningless to us. We're kind of hoping to find these zeros first, right? We, so we are going to be using that one mainly today. Um, before we get there, though, I'm trying to think of how to format this. I guess I really was mixed up by Aaron not showing up here today. 
Um, I need to figure out what these positions are first. So let's go ahead and find those zeros. How do I do that as a review? Not in the notes here. Two, yeah, so two. Um, my left boundary, zero, enter. My right boundary, I'm just gonna enter two. Anything that's in between there, one, enter. And oh, x equals one, exactly. Okay, so we can come in here and label our notes. This position over here in our notes, this position right here is one. Cool. What about that spot right there? I'm gonna guess it's two. Let's check it. So I'm gonna do second trace, two. I'm gonna guess um, 1.5 to five, and I'm gonna guess two. It is two, okay. So we have confirmed with the calculator, it is a two for that zero. We can label it in our notes as well. This is two. So that's good to know, but we need to know where your position is. The way that you find your position, um, the way that we find our position is by doing your start plus change. And that's kind of, uh, this is super out of order now that I'm thinking about it. I'm really sorry about these notes. But if you need to find your position, if you need to find your end position, the general idea is you're always gonna do whatever your start is, plus change. Start plus change. And change I represent with delta. If you don't like delta, write change in your notes. These notes are yours, right? Change in position. Start plus change in position. That will give you your end, or your position, or your end position. Whatever you wanna put in your notes, that's fine. So what was our start? Eight. Our start was eight. What was our change in position? What is the definition of change in position? We have, we have defined this in terms of an integral before in unit seven. It has some sort of integral between A and B, where A and B in this case are gonna be, um, I'll just leave it as A and B for now, but no, we're actually gonna make it exact. So it's gonna be between where and where? What's our A, what's our B? Zero and five, so zero and five of of your position. So I guess it's your V of T, yeah. V of T, DT. That will be the end position at time is equal to five. This five will change depending on what we're looking at. So I will say it's, um, just circle that five and say that that five can change. If we do one, that means how far are you at one seconds? That will be position at time is equal to five, because that's a five up there. So if I made a more general statement, I could say between zero and T, and then the answer will be your position at T. So how do we figure out where that's gonna happen? There are three things that you have to check every single time. Obviously you might be thinking, okay, well, I have to check where it goes from, a, in order to find a minimum, where it goes from a negative to a positive, so I have to find that spot. Yes, that's one of the things that you need to find. Specifically, that is this one. Every, every spot, every t where velocity is equal to zero. You don't have to find every single one. We know in order to find the minimum, we don't have to find this one. That is impossible to be a minimum. That's from a positive to a negative. A negative to a positive right here, that one we definitely need to check. So every t where v equals is zero, and if you don't remember this definition, oh, is it where it goes from positive to a negative or negative to a positive? Just find all of them, and then it'll, you'll eventually find your answer. So that's why I say every t where v is equal to zero, this is the way to find it, a brute force attack. Every term where v is equal to zero, and specifically, not just where V is equal to zero, but you're looking for a sign change, right? A V sign change. Where it goes through your X axis or through your T axis. That's the definition of what? An F sign change. <laughs> for review from F sign change. What is the broad term for F max and F minimum? F Relative extremum, exactly. So we're, what we're checking in step two here is relative extremum. You can add that to your notes if you want. We're checking for relative extremum. But there's these weird things that can happen at the start and the end. At your start and your end value, you could have your answer there. So we're always gonna check the start, always gonna check your end, and you're gonna check your relative extremum. So I could totally cross this thing out and say relative extremum, but that's where you're having a V sign change. So I'll say relative extremum to have it in the notes. So let's do that. And how do I do that? Now I'm coming back up here to the steps. In order to find 
this integral, this change in position, that's gonna be what Claire just said, second trace seven. I guess not what she just said, but she said it earlier. And we're gonna find that integral. So let's go ahead and set up our table and then we'll come back up here to the steps. So our table, these are values of t. We're gonna do the definition of the end value. So it's gonna be start plus change. And that will give us our end value. So what three things do we need to check for our t values? Which t values right here do we need to check? You guys help me out now. Just two. Two is one of them. Two is this one, right? We need to check t is equal to two. What else do we need to check? One. So we could check one. We, we know that that's going to be either a maximum or a minimum. What is it going to be? When I go from a positive height to a negative height, one will be a possible max. It's a possible max because we have to check end and uh, start and end values as well. What are our start and end values? Amen. Careful, careful. Our start and end times, I should say. Oh, zero and five. Comes from right here, zero and five. Zero and five. Okay. Every single time, where do we start? Eight. eight. We start at eight, start at eight, start at eight, start at eight. Our change is going to be different though. This is going to be the integral. We always start at time equals zero because we never have that. So it's going to be plus integral from zero to something plus integral from zero to something plus integral of zero to something. And then integral from zero to this time that we're looking for. So integral from zero to zero of velocity. Well, whenever I have integral from the same number to the same number, you can just assume that that's nothing. That means that we haven't moved, right? There is no change. This change that we're talking about, there is no change because it's still time is equal to zero. So your end value is where you started. If I haven't moved, I'm still at the start. That logically makes sense, right? Now is kind of going to be the tricky bit. From zero to one of velocity of t with respect to t, vt dt. How do we calculate that? Using our calculators. Let's pull up our calculators now. We're doing these steps. So we're going to do second trace seven. So second trace, so I'm calculating this integral down here, seven. Okay, it says the lower limit. Our lower limit down here is zero. It goes zero, then one. So zero, enter. Our upper limit is one, enter. And then it says, oh, it shades in between zero and one. Check that out. It tells us that area is 0.5548812, but we're going to round to three decimal places. So I'm going to do 0.55. Five. So this is going to be 8 plus 0.555 or just 8.555. Cool little tip on the calculator, and this works for your new calculators as well. Go ahead and quit out of this immediately. Don't type in anything. Second quit. Go ahead and do 8 plus, and then this negative symbol left of the enter sign, notice that the yellow thing above it is A and S. That stands for answer. If I do second, a negative sign, eight plus your answer. The answer that is storing right now is the thing that you just calculated for the integral, 8.555. So it's kind of a nice little trick to know. Obviously, we can add eight and 0.555 in our heads, but eventually we're gonna be doing more complex calculations. So now I want you guys on your own to find the integral between zero and two, add that to eight, zero to five, add that to eight of velocity of t dt, velocity of t dt. I want to find these n values here and here. Those are the only possible values. These four things that we're writing down right now are the only possible minimums and maximums. All right, good luck. And then I guess once you finish those four values, what is the farthest to the left? What is the farthest to the right? What are the mins and maxes? Answer A and B once you look at your table. All right, so when I do this integral between zero and two and I add eight to it, so if I come back over here to my calculator, I'm gonna, I still have my graph here to get back to the graph. And you guys have already noticed that this uh, shaded region never goes away unless I hit zoom zero again. You don't have to keep doing that. Just keep doing the same problem over and over. So for example, second trace, seven, zero, enter, uh, two, enter. And then it's shading this area right now and then finally getting down here. So I got 0.369. Hopefully you guys got that as well. 0.369 and I add eight. And then I do the same thing. Second trace, seven, zero, enter, five, enter. And then it'll shade 
all of this stuff, all of this stuff, and then all of um, the area on the right hand side eventually as well. So one thing, well, I guess we'll, we'll answer the question, but I need to draw your attention to something else as well. So I have 4.73, so 0.739 or 0 0.740 actually. So 0 0.740 and I have to add eight plus four, that's 12. So these are my end values. My only relative extrema can come from these possible times. So these are all the possible relative extremas. Where am I farthest to the left? What is my minimum value? My minimum value is eight. And when is that happening? That happens at t equals zero um, position. So I can say at t equals zero position is eight. Usually on the AP test, when it, whenever it asks when is it farthest left or where is the most farthest left, somehow just say the time and the position every single time because a big error that I had last year and the year even before that was people would say, when is he farthest to the left? Oh, eight. No, that's not when. When is t equals zero. So as long as you're saying position is eight and time is zero, you're answering both parts, you'll never make that mistake. So when is he farthest to the right? What is the maximum value? Well, 12.740 is the biggest value. So at, at t is equal to five is the answer, but I'll also include the information. Position is 12.740. Uh, 12.740. And making sure that we really understand this problem, I know that we could be done. Oh, I guess we didn't enter in all this stuff. You'd enter um, the lower limit and the upper limit. So if you were doing like the integral between zero and one, your lower limit would be zero and your upper limit would be one. If you had a different integral, then you would do different steps here. Um, but there's two things I still need to say. First, what's happening on our number line? Mr. Frog started at eight. Then at t is equal to one, he went to 8.555, so he moved right here. And then after that, at time is equal to two, he went to 8.369, then he went backwards to 8.369, and then from there, he went to 12.740, then he went from here all the way to here. So Mr. Frog is kind of jumping back and forth and back and forth. But why? How can you relate that to the graph? And that's kind of the key point because eventually you'll have multiple choice questions where you don't know these areas, you just know their size. So if I started at eight and I have a positive area, this area is positive, that means I'm going forwards. Then I have a negative area, which means I'm going backwards. And then I have a giant positive area, which means I'm going a lot forwards. Think of the areas as the change in position. That's the definition. The change in position is the integral. It is the area underneath that curve. So make sure that we have that logical connection between why am I moving forward versus backwards related to the area of the graph. And that's also kind of the, another way of looking at your F minimum. Why is it only possible for me to have my minimum right here and not here? This could be a minimum. This cannot be a minimum. Why? Well, it's preceded by positive area. If I just have a bunch of positive area, that's impossible to be a minimum because I'm just adding to it. Why is it impossible then if on the flip side of that, why is it uh, impossible for this to be a maximum? Well, it's preceded by negative area. This point is definitely bigger than this point because it's preceded by positive area and I'm just subtracting from that area by the time I get to this point. So it's another intuitive way to understand minimum and maximum why I move forward and backward by looking at a graph of f prime or a graph of velocity. There's a lot that I just said there. I don't know exactly how much we really understood there, but I'm hoping that you can come back to these notes to give yourself a refresher. So that's all I have for the notes. Are there any outstanding questions? Sir, sir. So, yes, there you go. I get what you're saying now. I just lost you when you were in the Finding one and two. Finding one and two. So how do you find the zeros? Is that the question? Yeah. yeah so if you need to find the zeros, it's the it's notes from 7-3. I go second, trace, and then zero. Second, trace, two, and then find the zeros. So this zero, I'm going to guess it's one. So I guess zero, two, and I guess one, and then I get the zero. Okay. Yeah, so it's just second, trace, two again. Yeah, other questions? Can you guys give me a fist of five on how well you think you can do these types of problems? You'll, every single time, you're going to have to make a table. So how well can you remember how to do the table, how to do this stuff on your calculator, what it means to be a minimum and maximum? How well can you do all of those things? I see a four. 
a three and a four. Three and a half. All right, cool. That concludes the notes. Thanks, guys.